Hi. Hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Lenore Von Stein, and this is The Facts. Uh, this is a discussion episode of The Facts, and The Facts has music and discussion. And tonight we're talking about, this is the second part of a two-part discussion on the effects of rape. Uh, and I'm sitting here tonight with Meredith Weber, who's um, uh, a clinical, I'm, I'm going to make sure I say this right, uh, clinical uh, assistant professor of school psychology, right, uh, at Temple University, uh, and um, a trauma therapist. Um, Esther Deblinger, who's a professor of psychiatry at, um, at Rowan. Yes. <laughs> I can read my own words. And, uh, and also the co-chair of CARES, Child Abuse Research, uh, Education and Services. Uh, and Erin Gallagher, who is uh, an investigator for Physicians for Human Rights. For, yes, I said it right. And, um, and she's, working with, she's worked with, um, with adult victims of uh, uh, sexual assault in conflict zones. And these two ladies work mostly with children. Yes. And you work with um, children and adults, right? And during the break, we started to talk about uh, institutions and institutional acceptance of uh, certain um, uh, sexual uh, assaults, uh, uh, acceptance in the terms of, in the sense of not doing anything about them. You know, this has been true in the military in the Catholic Church and the uh, on many college campuses in many schools uh, certainly in the prison system um, and and the uh, one thing that strikes me is that this you know if you're looking for kind of what's the if, if you're going to draw a picture of what's the kind of situation where rape is going to be you know you're likely to have more rape uh, is this kind of authoritative, uh, hidden kind of world where certain people have a lot of power, and that's it, my way or the highway. Um, so, well, anybody got anything to say about that? And what, 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 what? How do you handle institutional? Um, you know, when when you're in it, or when you're. I mean, it's very difficult. I mean, I, I can't imagine how prisoners handle it. You know. I think it's important to hold institutions responsible when they look away. Because I, I think people look away from sexual assault when they're protecting the institution instead of protecting the individual who's being harmed. And one of the, the commonalities of all of these different institutions is that um, they've had such immunity and there has been no oversight. They have been allowed to, they have their own laws, their, their own rules. Um, their own management and the outside world has been very much at a distance, um, but but obviously we, we can't be so because otherwise it's 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 created an environment where it's allowed to happen, and then it's been covered up. Um, so there there needs to be some sort of oversight from the outside since they haven't been able to manage it internally. Does this mean that sexual assault is part of situations where there isn't vigilance against sexual assault, where it isn't? Uh, where, where you know where it's it's that this uh, that this is somehow part of the what people do with each other. Some portion of the population does with each other, given their druthers. You give them you give them enough power, and a certain portion of the population is going to do this to other human beings. Or or is, is that just too abstract? Well, it seems like a lack of oversight is dangerous across the board. I mean, you just had a situation in Pennsylvania where two judges were uh, taking bribes to send these children to a facility where they were getting kicked yes, back. Yes, yes. And it went on for years, um, you know, because they were judges and seemingly had little oversight. So, you know, we can look at the banking industry. I mean, there's a lot of examples of just lack of oversight being problematic, I think, behaviorally. Lack of oversight and also secrecy and, and silence, um, isolated communities. Um, I, I think that we do need to encourage open dialogue about issues that concern children and, and women um, being oppressed. And um, I think when there is an, an environment of openness, it's less likely to occur. Well, I think also what you said about there being consequences that are visible to everyone is very important. I live in Pennsylvania, and I can say that after the Penn State sex abuse scandal happened, there has been change. 
uh, on college campuses, there's much, much more education and awareness around mm -hmm. Yep. Not only sexual assault, but you know, what does this look like in situations where maybe children from the community are coming on campus? Uh, child abuse reporting is up after that incident, so I I do mm -hmm. think in that case, you know, the fines were pretty significant, and there are other penalties to the college, and it did make an impact. 